We'll start off our little foray today to see what the best wild edible plants we can find in the summer are. But to start off, we're gonna start this one off in our garden. We end up with a lot of um, prairie weeds in here that are really nice edibles. So one of them's right here. This is lamb's quarters. So why it's plural, I don't know. That's just how everybody says it. Um, but it's uh, one of the best wild edible greens in the summer you can find. It's really nice to eat just like this. It has a nice fresh flavor. Um, I would say the plant, this one's approaching a little bit big, but it's probably just right still at the, maybe the last part of the, the period where this would be a real nice one to harvest. You definitely want to kind of avoid it once it goes to seed. This plant's really good fresh. It is also really good as a cook green. Uh, whenever I'm out on a survival trip and I find uh, lamb's quarters, I know I'm going to be boiling that up just to add a little bit of salt. And it's really delicious just like that. So I think it's superior to spinach. Now, there's another wild lamb's quarter plant right here. Now this is one generally you'd find in the spring. All when they all start growing at once, but this is pokeweed. Now, pokeweed you will find sporadically later in the year, in the summer, like, like right now. Now, pokeweed's kind of a controversial one. A lot of people will tell you it's poisonous, and then at the same time, you'll find a lot of people will tell you it's edible. They've sold, you, you can find down south where they'll sell it canned. You can buy it in the store uh, in some places. So, it's a lot like rhubarb. Rhubarb has parts of it that are poisonous and parts that aren't. You have to eat the stalk, not the leaf. Well... It's similar with pokeweed. Pokeweed, you just have to use the top portion of the growth and don't get the plant once it's real mature. This is probably about ideal right here, this or smaller. And then I would just cut the top uh, portion off like this right here. And then there is a process to cooking this that you have to pay attention to. You wanna boil this for 10 minutes three separate times and rinse the water each time. Boiling it three times will remove the uh, toxins that are in here and you'll have a really nice tasting plant. Now, one nice thing about the plant, it does hold up well against that aggressive cooking. So you can get away with boiling this plant three times and it still has a nice firm texture. And then the last step, saute it in a little bit of butter with some onions and mm, it's delicious, it really is. So. You do want to avoid the berries, although the roots are the most toxic part. So definitely stay away from the roots of the pokeweed plant. The next one, let's see. Oh, here we go. Look at you. This is a contender for maybe the best tasting wild green of all. This plant is purslane. Now purslane, looks a little bit like a succulent i think it might even be it, they do say it has one look alike that's poisonous that you have to be careful of i'll see if i can find it around here usually it's look alike grows in the cracks of driveways and things and i think it's a stretch on on, on misidentifying them the look alike has a flat leaf and it's it doesn't look appealing at all so um this is a very crunchy herb and it's got a sweet kind of citrusy flavor now, it also has a unique characteristic in that the flavor changes throughout the course of the day. Early in the morning, it'll have stored some sugar overnight. And you'll have a sweeter plant. Later in the day, it gets a little more sour and a little more uh, gamey tasting, I think. So if you're going to harvest this one, harvest it early in the morning if you, if you have the option to. But even late in the afternoon when it's getting all kinds of sun like this, it still tastes nice. So as far as harvesting it and saving it, I have pickled it before. Uh, I've done a, and, and it's nice pickled, uh, but I think it's best used as a, a, as a fresh green, as added to a salad. Personally, I think wild violets, lamb's quarter, and purslane and a salad mixed together is one of the best salads you'll ever have. It'll, it'll hold up against any salad you'd find on the shelf at Whole Foods. So try that out sometime. Yes, this would be uh, the look alike for purslane now. I think it looks quite a bit different. I don't remember the plant's name, but it is supposed to be pretty toxic. Honestly, it looks fairly unappealing if you ask me. A lot of people like this plant. This is wild mullen. 
Uh, a lot of people like to make tinctures and medicines out of it. Personally, I don't see it having much value outside toilet paper, but for that, it is divine. <laughs> it's the softest, most velvety toilet paper you'll ever use. Let's go see if we can find some midsummer wild edible plants in the woods, or maybe some mushrooms if we're lucky. Come on, buddy. So Goose and I are gonna hit the trail, see what kind of wild edible plants we can find in the woods. Now we are looking for mushrooms and berries and anything else we can find too, but I realize we have focused a lot on wild edible plants in the spring on this channel, but I always kind of omit doing anything with the plants later in the season because I get so caught up in fishing and mushroom hunting. And there are some really nice ones, especially in the summer. And I say always, I think of fall more as nuts and roots i think of the summer more as berries but there's still a lot of wild edible plants here to find in the in the summer so my the garden i showed you some in the garden already what we will you find but let's see what we can find out here when we really get in a more natural environment it's going to be a little bit tougher because truthfully people Truthfully, lawns are a great source of wild edible plants. They get a little harder when you get out here. You find a lot more uh, space between the really good edible ones. But here, we're, we didn't have to look very long. This is black raspberry. So they're just a little bit past, but... Oh man, they're sweet. The more sun black raspberries get, the more sweet they'll be. So anytime you find brambles out in a wide open patch like this where they're not up underneath the trees and everything, man, go out of your way to grab them because they are nice. Mm. Those are sweeter than the ones in my garden. Mm, very good. Now the leaf of this um, black raspberry plant Makes a nice tea too. A lot of nutrients in it. Generally, you want to harvest that a little earlier in the spring before the berries come on, but you can do it any time in a pinch. This is milkweed. I find around here a lot of people misidentify wild mullen and call it milkweed, but this is edible with one rule. Kind of like the pokeweed, you need to uh, boil this plant uh, three times and uh, rinse the water. Um, it does make a nice firm green once that's done. It's pretty easy to identify when you tear off the leaves or break the stem, you will find this milky latex that comes out, which is where it gets its name from. And that's the part where when you cook it, you gotta cook it three times to render the latex neutral. If you do harvest it, you only wanna take the top uh, couple of leaves off, like from right about there up, uh, just to help out with it not being quite so pungent. Oh, look at that guy. One thing with this plant you wanna be a little cautious of, uh, you wanna check it for, here, right here, monarch butterfly, right there. So that is the caterpillar of a monarch butterfly. And you don't want to accidentally harvest one of those guys because their population has actually been under pressure for some reason. Um, and milkweed is the only food source for that caterpillar. They don't eat anything else, just milkweed. So pay special attention when you're harvesting milkweed that you're not getting the eggs or the caterpillars mixed up. And um, this guy, We'll turn into a awesome butterfly soon enough. Now here, this is blackberry, I think. Mm. Oh yeah, that's blackberry. That's like the earliest blackberry. I haven't seen any actual blackberries ripe yet. So this is the first of the year for me. Oh, it's so sweet. Blackberries taste so good. Compared to black raspberries, they are considerably sweeter. 
Oh, look at these. Oh, man. Did we come on the right day or what? <gasps> hmm. That one wasn't quite ready. Well, the birds and everything are pretty good about getting them when they ripen. Oh, there's one right there. Look at that guy. Oh, yeah. Where's that camera? There it is. Look at that. Uh, wow. That is so sweet. When they're out here, blackberries are definitely the same as the black raspberries. The more sun they get, the more sweet they are. So, oh, here we go. Look at this. Jackpot. Mmm, so good. Oh, I'm gonna sit here all day, but let me just nibble on them as I go. They're everywhere. Oh, yeah. So, when I'm mushroom hunting and I'm in an area like this, I got a lot of visibility, I'm not finding any shrooms. What I'm gonna look for are the biggest fallen trees I can find. I'm usually gonna start hunting those out and then I'm gonna start looking for lower land, anything that's gonna hold water a little longer. And also, I like to pick up any fun little stuff I find along the way. <clears throat> this was fun. Okay, now the, the deeper woods can be Kind of a ghost town for edible plants sometime but this is the the major exception you want to keep yourself fed just know this plant this one alone will feed you better than any other wild plant in the summer late spring and into the fall this is stinging nettle even when they have the sting you're going to still eat it fresh but you need to do so by uh, kind of folding it in your mouth so you don't catch your uh, lips or anything with the stingers because that stings. One of the things you want to collect right now is this stuff. This is cottonwood seeds. It's falling everywhere, and this would just be tender for fire starting. So I may go ahead and just pocket some and test it later and just throw a spark on it and see how well it lights. Here we got something. Got a real early start on a reishi not a very big one there's another one starting right around here maybe we'll find some more i'll go ahead and pluck this guy out It'll be enough for one little tea so this is ruble park it's uh been owned by the Parks Department in Vigo County for a long time and I used to come over here all the time they'd run me out every now and then but um, they've recently opened it up and put in trails and that's what this is uh, stumbled across here is one of the hiking trails this is a wetland so it gets pretty wet sometimes which is why they call it a wetland no tick today. Mm, burns my eye. I hate having to use that stuff, but it's worth it when it's tick time. Here's a good one. Mmm. So nice. Sassafras. So usually you would use the root uh, as a flavor additive. It is one of those plants that somewhere along the line, somebody in California decided it was carcinogenic. So now they don't use it as a food additive anymore. You can do a lot of reading. Most of it will convince you it's pretty harmless in normal quantities. Um, there is one other thing you can do with this other than making root beer. You could take these leaves and you can boil them and it will release, um, almost looks like, a, call it a mucus. 
but it can be used as a thickening agent, kind of like uh, cornstarch. So if you take a lot of um, the sassafras leaves and just boil them together, they can um, make a nice, um, you know, it's a way to thicken up your, your food without really impacting the flavor a whole lot, from my experience. But I've tried it. It's pretty cool. It does work. Such a good smell. Oh, look at this. This is a heck of a place to harvest. Look at all. These are just right. What you want are the runners and the roots. But you want to harvest this in the fall. When all the leaves die off, it'll send all the energy down to the roots. You come in here and you could pry up hundreds and hundreds of roots and you will never impact this patch. It's very strong. Yeah, I might come back out here sometime and snag a little bit. Why did I smell the phone? I should probably smell this. Snash a fresh. more more berries so for wild mushroom hunting in the summer one tip to look out for is when you have a real dry spell and while the mushrooms don't pop for a long period of time the longer the period of the dry spell the more intense the flurry is going to be when the rain comes so right now we're on a, about a three week dry spell. Even right now, if we had a day of rain, I would wait a day and then I would be in the woods and I would expect it to be exploding with mushrooms. Because what happens is, it's like every mushroom has a timer that goes off when it's their time to pop up for whatever factor. But when their timer goes off, but the conditions aren't right, most of them, especially the summer mushrooms, they kind of wait. And what happens is you'll end up with a whole bunch of them who are ready and they're just waiting for the conditions to get right. So when that rain finally comes, kaboom, you get massive flushes. All right, Goose and I are gonna go try a different spot. Mushrooms aren't happening here. And that's what we, we gotta add some mushrooms to our forage today. So just driving to our next spot and we saw these. Now these are beautiful lilies and they are edible the blooms are edible they have a kind of a vegetable-y flavor to be honest with you it's not the greatest flavor in the world unless you cook it cooking it makes it a little better but it's almost like a sickening vegetable flavor but the real choice part of this plant is the bulb it's got to come back and get it in the fall when the plant stored all its energy back down to that bulb dig that bulb up and it's kind of almost like a little sweet little potato all right now here are two plants that you'll find in your yard and your garden a lot um first we've got wood sorrel uh, also known as sour grass we did a video on this one recently how it really makes a nice tea all by itself um cooking or boiling this you do keep the sour flavor and pretty much every kid in America who grew up outside of the city knows this is sour grass. If you just take a big bite of it, it's sour like a lemon almost. It tastes like a lemon candy. It's got a sweet and sourness to it. Little yellow blooms. But this is the kind of area where you generally find it, right on the edge. You're not going to find it in the deep woods. Um... You kind of find it right on the cusp, right on the edge, where maybe even where the soil's been a little disturbed. Um, maybe on the edge of a creek or right near a body of water. Now, next one up here. This is a wild violet. Now, no bloom on this one at the moment, but the blooms are usually white or purple. But has a heart-shaped leaf. And as far as a salad green goes, this one is, in my opinion, the the uh, the best wild plant to make the base of the salad out of now purslane and um, lamb's quarters are excellent uh, to add to it but for the sort of the backbone of the salad where you want one green to sort of you know fill the bowl i think wild violet's the way to go as always the best 
um, specimens are the ones that are younger, but even the ones that get a little older, they don't seem to get bitter very quickly. It's a very m mild flavored green. So, wow, violets are top shelf. So, hey, hey, Goose, you're kind of in the way, pal. <laughs> you are soaking wet. Gustav got a nice little cool off bath back at the pond. Hey, buddy. Hey, move over there just a little. Okay. All right. So, Goose wants to help out a little with this part of the video. So, May apples have an edible fruit. Now, the hard part is, is it does not ripen once you pick it, and it is not real delicious if it's not ripe. So, you got to let it ripen on the plant. But the, the critters are in tune with these and they will get them as fast as they can. Uh, here's another one right here. This one's a little bigger, but again, it's not ripe either. So I'm not gonna pick them. Not that I'll be back this way, but it seems like a waste for me to pick them. I don't know, this one's got, this one's a little, this one's a little bit ripe. It's starting to get a little soft, so. But may apple fruit, um, they're a little rare. I'd say only about maybe 5% of, of the plants get pollinated. You have a real low pollination rate. And um, it's uh, just a stroke of luck to get one perfectly ripe. But when you do, it's a real treat. They are a nice flavor. I, I think maybe a little bit like a sweet pawpaw in flavor. So here's one you can find in, in the deep woods and wild uh, in the middle of summer easily uh this is wild ginger at least that's what it's called it's not actually related to real ginger uh it just has a strikingly similar smell so the leaf the root the root especially it just smells exactly like ginger now it does have some medicinal value but it does have some toxicity in it too. So this is one you wanna use pretty sparingly. Most of the time, people don't really use it as a culinary herb. It's used as a uh, medicinal herb for some of its properties. So when I say that stinging nettle's the workhorse of your uh, foraging diet, this is what I'm talking about. It's just because it's everywhere. You get into the deep woods and there's just not a lot of edible plants, but this one is everywhere. It's a shade lover, so it fills in all these gaps in and around uh, uh, under the canopy, and it tastes delicious. It's readily available. So, if there's only one plant you were gonna know in a uh, you know, in the woods, I'd say that'd probably be the one. Now, look at this. Getting closer to getting a ripe one here. I see two right here. This one's falling. Ooh. Now, this one's squishy. Here's another one. I don't know. I'm going to try one of these. Look at those three of them right here. Okay. I definitely... Yeah, that one's not ready yet. This one I found on the ground. I'm tempted to just try. All right. Ooh. Mm. Very sweet, but also been on the ground for a little bit. Um, I got I got a little bit of a uh, fermented flavor in there. So, <laughs> but you could taste intense sweetness in that one. I'm gonna keep looking for one that's in a perfect eating condition. We finally got, finally got a mushroom. There we go, let's see what y'all are. Oh yeah, it's a platter full. So, these mushrooms are a little bit dry. And they always usually have bugs living up underneath them. It's called a platterful mushroom. That's a common name. I think it's like Mega Calibia or something. I don't know. I just get those stupid hard names. 
You know, I think we ought to go through and rename all of the wild plants and mushrooms something easy. And this could be Larry the Mushroom. See how easy that would be from there on? But no, we got to have four different weird names for every mushroom just to make things hard. Look at this guy. Now, you can see how similar these look from the top. But when you look at this one underneath, this mushroom has a much more densely uh, packed gill than this one. This gill is much looser. Now, this on the right is a fawn mushroom, and on the left is a platterful mushroom. They definitely are lookalikes for each other, but the good news is they're both edible. Usually, you will find the fawn mushroom going directly off of rotten wood, uh, dead fallen wood and you'll find the uh, platterful mushroom growing on the ground near rotting wood. Those are the two mushrooms that I've always said when you can't find any other mushroom in the midsummer you can always find these two. So they've held true. As far as which one I would choose to eat if I had to pick one the platterful mushroom wins every time. It's a Nope, very nice yeah, that one wrong. The platter, uh, what, wait, what did I say? Hang on. The, f as far as which one I would choose to eat, the fawn mushroom wins every time. That is a very nice flavored mushroom. I think it goes excellent on pizza uh, or in a white sauce or pretty much anything you would use like a portobello for. This mushroom is a little dry. It's not unpleasant to eat. It just doesn't have quite the same character that the fawn mushroom has. So there we go. We got two mushrooms, Goose. Yeah. There we go. There's another one. Look at that guy. Oh yeah. That's a good specimen there. Now, this one would be pretty good to take home to eat right here. So maybe I'll go ahead and bag him up. Now, the thing about the, both of these kinds of mushrooms, you put them in the bag and they're gonna fall to pieces. So if you've got it, the ability to just carry them in your hands, that's the best way, but uh, who wants to do that? If you can avoid putting the bag into your backpack, that'll help. So I'm just gonna carry the bag like this to keep them from having uh, too much pressure on them, getting bruised and beat up. So we'll see how it goes. Well, we came out of the woods. Unfortunately, we weren't able to find the prime May apple we were looking for. But we did get some nice mushrooms and we identified and found a whole lot of different plants and kind of snacked on them along the way. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about it, put them in the comments. Appreciate you coming along. If you like the channel, like to see anything specific, put it in the comments. If you like the channel, you know what to do. Hit some buttons or something. Yeah, I forgot about this. So let's try this out. Here's our cottonwood. <laughs> yeah, I'd call that a win. The, the leaf is known for looking like the shape of a goose's foot. It's just fascinating.